Okay, hey, welcome to the shop. We're working on a boat. It's a channel where we share tips and tricks to help you working on your boat and to have a great time while you do it. The jokes are campy, the production value is cheap, but the information is priceless. So, so stay tuned. My name's Eric with New Point Marine. Grab your tool bag. Let's work on a boat. Two semesters, tuition, out of state, room board, and books. Cool! Okay, hey, welcome to the shop. We are working on a boat. Uh, the other day I was on my own boat and I was uh, replacing the uh, anodes in uh, my heat exchanger on my engine and I thought uh, this would make a really good video. And uh, Unfortunately, I couldn't film it on scene, couldn't be live on scene uh, because my engine room is very small and there's not much room, uh, not even for a second thought there. So um, what I did was I went out and I got us, got us a heat exchanger that we could uh, bring here in the shop, get it on the bench so we could see it <clears throat> and uh, see how we go about changing these uh, pencil anodes out in our heat exchanger because um, I wanted to share couple of tricks with you. Uh, one is how to get these anodes out without doing damage to the heat exchanger itself. And uh, to uh, show you a trick that could save you some money when you are doing this job. So um, stand by. Okay, so the first thing we got to do is we got to get this old anode out of our heat exchanger. Now, um, there's a way to do this and there's a way not to do it. Um, I have seen guys grab a wrench, put on the anode and start cranking. Um, that's, that's, that's bad. Um, because there's a little holder here that holds the anode into the body of the heat exchanger. And this nut or this holder is just soldered onto the housing of the exchanger. And if this is tight and you start pulling too hard, uh, you can crack that uh, solder seal in there and then it just becomes an expensive mess and uh, you don't want to deal with that. So I'm going to show you my trick for uh, getting these out when they're stuck without damaging the heat exchanger housing and then share a trick to save you some money. So let's get this out first. So what we need to do that is two wrenches. At first I need a wrench that will fit the holder of the end right there like that. My second wrench will fit onto my anode. Now I'm going to arrange these two, something like this, so that when they are closing together, we are loosening the anode. And what I do is I arrange this like so. I grab the ends with my hands and just squeeze. Now I've been doing it this way. What we're doing is the torque that we're applying to get the anode out is not being transferred to the heat exchanger housing. So it really reduces the chance that we're going to crack this this uh, solder joint on this anode holder. So let's go ahead and get this guy out. And what do we got? Yep, that's usually what they come out looking like. Uh, that anode has uh, lived its life and it's done its very best uh, to protect our metals up to the very end. There's no more left of it. So um, the money saving trick I wanted to share with you is you can actually reuse this holder. Okay, so most of the time when we, uh, these guys will take that out and there's no anode left, they'll just toss that holder, they'll go to the store and they'll get one of these. This is the complete anode with holder. And it works great, it goes right back in there and we're off. But the trick uh, here to save you a little bit of money is we can actually buy only the pencil and replace just this part and reuse the holder. Now, you might ask, well, it seems like a lot of trouble. Well, at the time of filming, this anode here, this is a size E1, was going for about uh, just a little less than $7 online. The pencil part of that is going for about 3 Now. If your boat is using uh, the next size up, which is a size E2, that anode 
there. Also about $3 with the holder. It's a, getting closer to uh, $9 and change. So it's a $6 difference there. So um, depending on how many anodes you have on your boat, depending on how long you have to, or how often you're replacing them, uh, it, we can save you some money and it could add up over the boating season. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get set up and I'm going to show you how we go about reusing that anode holder so we can save you a few dollars. Um, and uh, I'm going to film it in real time so that you can see. It only takes a couple of minutes to get this out of there and uh, save a few dollars. Now, um, my preference on my own boat is I have two sets of, two complete sets of anodes so that when I go and I service it and I pull this out, I have a fresh one I can pop back in. I bring this back to the shop and get my coffee cup and a few minutes spare here or there, I'll just go ahead and uh, pop a new pencil into the holder and we're ready for the next uh, service interval for our Antinodes. So uh, I am going to get set up so that we're looking down on this and uh, I am going to show you how we get that out of there and reuse this anode holder and our heat exchanger. Okay, so here we are uh, at the vise. Uh, I want to go ahead and get that stub of that anode out of there and reuse this holder. Um, so I've gathered up what we're going to need to do this and uh, center punch. I like two very sharp drill bits, a small one to get started with, and, a, and the appropriate size drill bit for the, oops, a tap so that we can clean the threads up. And occasionally you need a file because sometimes this is at a point and it doesn't like to support a drill. The drill wants to skate off to the side. And a drill motor. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's get this out of there. And do it in real time so you can see it's not a big deal. Okay. Lock that down. Just drip it down. Now, if there was a point here that would cause my drill bit to want to wander off to the side, I just take my file and knock that point off. But in this case, it's uh, the anode has corroded pretty far down in there, so we're okay. I want to take my center punch and get in the middle of this as best I can. Now, you got to be a little proud with this because the zinc is soft and the brass also is soft. And if your drill bit is wandering too much, you can do some damage to the, to the threads of the brass holder. So, there, and we've got a good center punch. Now, take my small drill bit first, line up in the middle, and let's go. Yeah, that's good. And we're through. So now I take my this is a 5 16 drill bit. Why a 5 16 Well, great question. That is because I know that on the, the threads on my pencil here are actually 3 8 16 threads. See? Good. Thread right on the nut. So I know that a 5 16 drill bit is what I need for my 3 8 tap. center. So now I'm just going to clean the threads up with my 3.8.16 cap.
Nice. Good. And put that. And there we go. And let's go ahead and clean the threads off. A good electrical connection between the anode and the metal we want to protect. And there we go. So, the choice is yours. That's three dollars. That's six and change. So, you can save a few bucks there. Now, um, so now I'll go ahead and uh, get the heat exchanger back over here, and we'll pop this anode in. Okay. So we've got our pencil anode put together. Uh, we'll go ahead and get it into the heat exchanger here. I am going to actually. A little bit just to clean it up some. Now, I'll go ahead and uh, just pop this in. Now, notice uh, when I am putting my anode back in its holder, uh, there is no pipe dope, there's no thread sealant, there's no Teflon tape. It's just metal to metal. Why am I not using thread sealant on this? Well, that is because I want this anode to have a very solid, good mechanical electrical connection between my sacrificial anode and the metal that we're trying to protect. If we insulate this with pipe dope or thread tape or anything like that, uh, we insulate it too much, uh, this anode is going to be ineffective. So, put it right back in. And same as before, take my two wrenches and squeeze them together so that we're not putting too much torque on our heat exchanger housing and uh, risking cracking that solder joint right there. So um, anyway, that's uh, that's our show. Uh, I hope you like that, and I uh, hope you. And, uh, save yourself some money, do it this way. Um, if you go online, you could probably even find the, uh, the bulk package and uh, they're cheaper that way, even more. So um, anyway, until next time, uh, keep working on your boat.